My name is Sandra Thompson, chair of the Mingle Jack Committee. We got started back in 2010 and we started talking about it and then we decided maybe we, the group needed to do something to bring this out about the Mingle Jack lynching. It sounded very interesting because I, as a child, I heard about stories about Mingle Jack, but when you went to question it, it was hush. We went to the book signing and I was sitting in the audience and I was sitting next to Ines and we turned to each other and we said almost simultaneously that we need to start a committee group. We started um, going to different committee meetings, working together, that we would just try to get a marker. This is the bowl, this is the size of the bowl that, that I have. Oh. Uh, James took this picture uh, oh. from Bradley Beach. So just to give you an idea how big the thing is, so nobody can walk away with it. We would go to the Eaton Town committee meetings, ask the councilman if we were able to go ahead and raise funds without any controversy with this project. At first we had a little resistance, and um, but we kept on plugging through. Me and Carol, we did a lot of research at the Manalapan Library, and they were very helpful there getting information. And one of the descendants, one of the men who lynched uh, Mingo, he was there, and uh, we wanted to get information from him, but he didn't really want to talk about it. If he did, he said he, if we said anything, he would deny it. So a lot of people didn't, they didn't like, uh, like us doing what we were doing, you know, but we went on and, and did it anyhow. Initially, when we tried to obtain information, people were very helpful, they're very open, but it seemed like the closer we came to the completion of the project, people started backing away, started closing up. They didn't want to give us any information. They didn't want to be associated with the project. And um, we thought that was very strange because we were really hyped up to get this project completed. Why the Smingo Jack project was important because at the time it was the only uh, lynching, documented lynching in Eatontown back in the 1800s. And, because most of us lived here in Eatontown, I thought it was important to, to bring it, bring the truth out and what happened to him and that, you know, it happened in Eatontown. Most of the lynchings are documented from the South. We don't have any lynching documentation for the North. Um, Ida Bell, uh, she has a book called The Red Book, and it has hundreds of lynchings, but they're all from the South. This was the first time that the North was put on the spot per se, because everyone thinks lynchings only occurred in the South, which is not true. And uh, I thought it was very brave, very courageous of James to take on a, a controversial project like this. Um, a young white man who could have cared less. You know, he could have been had that attitude, but he didn't. He was very um, diligent. He did all his research. He was very easy to work with. and. Um, I thought it was just time. History needs to be spoken about, it needs to be written, it needs to be shared, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, we should not, uh, just because maybe your ancestor was a slaveholder, we had many of those in the state of New Jersey, and maybe you felt a little embarrassed by that. You shouldn't feel embarrassed by that. You didn't do it, you didn't condone it. Now, if you condone it, that's a different story. But, um, Mingo Jack, it just seemed to stand out because he didn't have due process. It was a mob that just decided they were going to take this man out of this world and they didn't care whether he was guilty or not. I just think that it's just a part of Eatontown history, not only just for the residents that live here, but then you have your African American uh, residents that live here that need to know. And everybody should just kind of like just be informed of these things like that. Yeah. It's just history. I was surprised that this lockup stood until about 1968. I passed it every day going to work. All of us are member, we're, we're workers at um, Fort Monmouth, and we passed it every day without even knowing the history behind this. And I'm really surprised that it was torn down since it stood so long, and I'm wondering what happened to the, the brick and uh, who authorized this monument in a way. And a monument of shame, but um, why it was torn down and 
what happened to the bricks. I just wanted to say we, uh, Mr. Thornton showed us uh, the location of the lockup and we were digging around and we found bricks and we think that this may be uh, a part of the lockup because it was not torn down until at least 1969, maybe later. And this is a picture of it. And if you compare the bricks to, to like that, I mean, it, it's not confirmed that it is, but I mean, if, I mean, it very well could be. It's in the spot where he said it was. So I just think that that's very, that's very interesting that that might be pieces of, you know, where this crime took place, you know, so. At the uh, memorial, I was very surprised, very happy uh, the way it turned out. Got a lot of support. The mayor did a great speech. Today, we acknowledge an incident that occurred over 100 years ago. No one should be subjected to the actions of a goon gang, and that we as individuals all essentially stand responsible for the concept of civil rights. I would like to publicly apologize to the spirit of Mingo Jack, Samuel Johnson. We should never forget that a person's civil rights is one of the most cherished things that we possess. By this marker, let it stand as a beacon to civil rights, not only here in Eatontown, in New Jersey, in our country, but also in our world. When we had the ceremony for the memorial, it was a beautiful day. There wasn't any wind. There wasn't any darkness. And we felt satisfied that we were doing the right thing. These stories dwindled down to us and thinking you're in the North, that things don't happen like this. And like Carol said, it is a, a negative, but I think as the group has turned it around into a positive, but it's history and history needs to be told, whether it's negative or positive. And um, people need to know what happened around them. So um, there's things that still coming up that um, we are finding out right here in Monmouth County, in New Jersey, of things, um, because people are curious. And I think it's the younger generation, too, want to know. The, the crime, um, you know, I don't, I don't know enough to, to comment on his, his guilt or innocence. The crime is clearly as well as anything else. The crime would be that a man was, was killed without a trial, mm -hmm. which is right. clearly a, a, a violation. So there needs to be some type of memorial. And like I said, I was I lived in Eaton Town my whole life, granted a shorter period of time than some people here, but I never knew about it. And I was offended that I went to schools here. I never knew about it. It was one of those things that you never it wasn't for meeting Sandra and, and this type of discussion, I never would have heard about this again.